word linga comes from the root word lena. Linga means the form. These lingas or these energy forms or these ellipsoids can be created with various qualities for various purposes. There are some lingas created for health, some for well-being and prosperity, for some for spiritual progress, for meditativeness. Like this various types of lingas can be created. Essentially they can be categorized as seven different ways. These seven can be further multiplied into many, many kinds. The uniqueness of Dhyana Linga is it has all the seven dimensions of it, but essentially it is tweaked towards meditativeness without any instruction. If you simply sit in the sphere of Dhyana Linga, you become meditative. How many of you been there? Have you been there? Okay. No instruction, simply go sit there for ten minutes. You will become meditative by your own nature without any instruction. So the idea and the science and the technology behind this is that you create an energy form which will do something that you want to do for a long period of time. A form is also referred to as a yantra. Yantra means today a machine. A simple form is a yantra. As you mix these many forms and make it into a more complex thing, then it becomes a machine. Various forms put together is a larger machine, isn't it? So similarly, a simple form you take and add many, 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 many parts to it and it becomes a complex machine. So it is in a way like a meditation machine. You simply sit there, you become meditative. Many people, this is the experience of thousands of people, they come there thinking they want to sit there for ten minutes, they sit there and they get up, it's two hours, they're sitting right there. Because once you're meditative, your sense of time is just gone. Time r rules you only because you are strongly physical. The more physical you are, the more difficult it is to pass time. Please see this. Have you noticed this? If you're intellectually active, time passes off much more quickly. If you are beyond the intellect, time just disappears in your experience. But if you are just physical, time doesn't go, you fidget. Isn't it so? The more physical you are, the more time tortures you. Time torture is only for the physical. If you're not physical, time doesn't torture you. To become meditative means to create distance between you and your physicality, not to give it up but to carry it loosely. If you carry it loosely, you can use it the way you want, when you don't want, you can drop it. If you get enmeshed in it, everything that is the quality of the physical also torments you. All the limitations of the physical infect you and bother you through your life. So meditativeness means on one level, it just means that you're creating a distance between you and your physicality. Or in other words, it is a simple journey from asutoma satgamaya. What is not true to true? What is it that's not true? What is not true is just this. You gathered this, it's a fact, but now you believe it is. This is you. This is not true, isn't it? So truth means you moved away from untruth. Truth is not some kind of a thing that you do. If you don't lie, you are truthful. You don't have to do anything to be truthful, isn't it? If you have to lie, it's a very complex exercise. Yes or no? Huh? You know it by experience, don't you? If you have to tell a lie, it's a very complex exercise. To be truthful, what do you have to do? Nothing, even an idiot can be truthful. Yes or no? It's very simple. If you simply sit here, you're truthful, isn't it? If you want to tell a lie, it takes a lot of complexity. So, truth is not something that you do. You move away from untruth, you're truthful. It's just that simple. So, Dhyanalinga is just a tool towards that.